and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So here's an interesting video. Let's do some reverse engineering to figure out how to make a game that finds success semi-guaranteed. Let's make a complete step-by-step -step blueprint on how to achieve this goal. And for this video, I'd find success as $50,000. Now, there's nothing special about that number. It's all completely arbitrary. I only say how success is up to you to define it. Maybe just completing a game, that's enough of a success. Maybe just making something you can play with your friends, maybe that is a success. So yep, success can take many forms, and for this particular video, I define success as being $50,000 in revenue. It's a nice round number. For some people, this would be life-changing money, and for others, it would just pay a few months' rent. Also, this number would put you on around the top 10% of Steam. That is definitely a nice challenge to aim for. Most games on Steam don't even make $1,000, so over half the games make under that. So if you manage to hit this 50k goal, then really awesome, you are very skilled. Personally, I have managed to hit this goal with a bunch of my games. Here in Portugal, that is a very nice amount. This is how I've been able to make a living as a game dev for over a decade. So here, let's come up with a plan to make sure that our game finds this level of success. And the way we're going to do is basically by reverse engineering a bunch of metrics. Like for example, you've probably already heard that you need about 7,000 wishlists to have a successful launch. Which, by the way, that number is not fixed in stone. There's nothing special about the specific number 7,000. That's a rough guesstimate, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But that is basically the number you need in order to land on the popular coming before release, and then on new and trending after launch. If you do get on these two lists, that really kickstarts the algorithm and gives your game a bunch of visibility, and then assuming your game is good, it takes that and basically the snowball starts rolling. If you don't even manage to get on this list, the popular new and trending, if so, then the odds of hitting our 50k goal, those are very small. So this is an example of a metric that we do need to hit. So let's start at the end. The goal is to hit $50,000, and now the first thing we should define is an actual price point. We need the price point so we can figure out how many copies we need to sell to hit our goal. And on this, there are a lot of possible price points available on Steam. At the low end, you have three to five dollars. These are for quick impulse purchases, for example, Vampire Survivors. Then in the middle, you have between ten and fifteen dollars. This is sort of the normal standard. For example, my own game, Dink Guardians, is fifteen dollars. And on the high end, you have twenty to thirty dollars. These are the premium indie games. So, for example, Hades is thirty bucks. Now, one mistake that a lot of indies make, and one mistake that I've made myself, is selling their game way too cheaply. Indies routinely sell their game for less than they should. By doing so, they need to sell many more copies in order to reach the same revenue goal. And the reason why I and others call setting a $3 to $5 price point a sort of mistake is because, usually, in today's world, the biggest limiting factor is not necessarily price or how good your game is, but rather the biggest limitation is actually reaching an audience that wants to play your game. There are so many awesome games coming out at all times, being able to stand out and actually reach players, that is going to be your biggest challenge. If you make your game $5, then you need to reach three times more players as opposed to if your game is $15. And there are really not many people who would gladly buy your game at 5 bucks, but won't really spend 15 bucks. If someone is interested in your game, then the $15 price point will very likely not scare them away. And even if it does, they will likely just wishlist and buy it on a sale at a later date. Like I said, the main limitation nowadays is actually reaching the players. If you lower the price from 15 to 5 bucks, you will obviously sell more copies, but not necessarily three times as more. It is very, very difficult to reach three times the number of players. And another benefit of a higher price point is you always have more room for discounts. You can discount a $15 game by 30%, and you still end up with getting 10 bucks, as opposed to if your game is 10 bucks by normal, and people will buy it more, as opposed to if the game is just 10 bucks as normal. People always prefer a sale as opposed to a non-discount price, even if the actual number is the same, that's just basic human psychology. So on defining a price point, the general consensus is you should be in the $10 to $15 range. Now, this does not mean you cannot find success outside of this range. Obviously, like I mentioned a while ago, Vampire Survivors is a massive mega hit. It's one of the most successful games of all time. And at launch, it was actually three bucks and then increased up to five bucks. Even myself, my most successful games have actually been three dollars. Both GameCorp DX and Blueprint Tycoon, both those have been three bucks. And GameCorp has made over 200k and Blueprint Tycoon almost 200k. Both of these were three dollar games, so you can do it. However, one note on these two games. First of all, they were launched quite a long time ago when Steam was very, very different. There were many more impulse purchases back then, and visibility also wasn't as hard as it is now. Nowadays, the general consensus is indeed you should price your game between the $10 to $15 range. And of course, let me say, obviously the game has to be worth the cost. You cannot charge $15 for a Flipbird clone or an Asset Flip, that doesn't work. So in general, pick a higher price point, but do know that whatever price you pick, it has to be worth the cost. And as a quick side note, the thing players most use to identify value is visuals. So if you charge $15, your game has to look good. It cannot have programmer art. You need a professionally drawn capsule, professionally drawn art, meshes, and so on. Even if it's a more mechanically oriented game, some like a city builder or a factory game, even so, visuals are extremely important. Visuals are how players first identify quality, so if you charge a quality price point, like 15 bucks, it has to be worth that cost, and it has to look like it is worth it. So for our hypothetical game, let's come up with a price point of $15. 
which means that if our final goal is to sell $50,000, if so, at a $15 price point, that means we need to sell a total of 3,333 copies. So yep, with that, we have our first three numbers. In order to make $50,000 at a $15 price point, we need to sell 3,000 copies. Now, the next number we can look at is the estimate of week one sales to year one sales. There's some excellent research by Game Discover Co. By the way, this is an excellent newsletter. I highly recommend it. In this issue, they have a ton of data. Specifically, they have on the multiplier of week one to year one sales. Now, this one, as you can see, it's a pretty wide range. So it goes from just under two to almost about six. Meaning that, for example, this game down here, if this game sold $10,000 in the first week, then in the first 12 months of release, it would likely end up making about 18000 Whereas this one over here, if it makes about $10,000 in the first week, it would likely end up making like 58000 in the first year. So yep, there's a big gap, but we can see over here the median. And we can see how the median for all categories of year one revenue is about three times week one revenue. That means that in order for our hypothetical game to sell $50,000 or 3,000 copies in the first year, if so, then we need to sell a third of that on week one. So that's around $16,000 .6 in the first week, which equals 1,111 copies sold. Okay, so we have a bunch more numbers. Now that we know how many copies we need to sell on week one in order to hit our year one go, now there is another number we can look at. One number that tells us how many wish lists we need to get before release in order to make sure we sell this many copies on week one. Again, set another study by Game Discover Co. This one tracks week one sales as fractions of launch wish lists. And this one has quite a lot of variation, even more than the previous one. We can see how some games over there only have like 0.05, meaning only about 5% of wish lists convert on the first week. So for example, a game with 10,000 wish lists would only sell 50 copies on the first week. That would be a pretty terrible result. But on the other hand, some games convert like crazy. Some games convert literally 100%. So if a game had 10,000 wish lists before release, it would sell 10,000 copies on week one. That's an insane result. So this is definitely a huge range of possibilities. Once again, let's look at the median, and median is 0.2x, meaning about 20%. By the way, these are just raw numbers, meaning this does not mean that 20% of your wish lists convert directly into sales. Rather, the final number of sales during launch week will be about 20% of the wishlist number before release. So that includes people who did wishlist the game before release and then bought it, but also includes people who just found the game organically after release and then bought it. So this number over here, this median, this is not a direct conversion. It does not mean that 20% of your wishlists convert and then you get a bonus of organic ones. Nope, this is just totals. If you have about 10,000 wishlists before release, you can expect to sell about 2,000 copies on the first week. So based on that number, 20%, now we can finally figure out how many wishlists we need to get before release. In order to sell 1,100 copies on the first week, we need to have 5,500 wishlists before release. And since there is such a huge variation both above and below, and also since, like I said quite a while ago, in order to reach our 50k goal, we really need to get on the popular upcoming list. Because of that, let's actually define our goal as 7,000 wishlists. So yep, this is our nice rough blueprint for making a successful $50,000 game. We need to gather around 7,000 wishlists before launch, then we define our game as having a price point of $15. With those 7,000 wishlists, hopefully we will sell 1,100 copies on week one, which will equal about $16,600 in gross revenue, which then, that week one sales, those will likely translate into 3,300 copies sold on the first year, which will equal our final goal of $50,000. So yep, this is it. This is a nice blueprint for making a successful game. Now, obviously, these are just estimates. This would be the result if your game was 100% perfectly average, perfectly matching within the median of all of these stats. But of course, no game is ever straight on the median. So you might be able to hit this goal with a lower price point, like a $3 game, or you might be able to miss it if you have like 20,000 wishlists. Perhaps your game converts quite a bit more from wishlists into week one, or perhaps it converts much worse from week one into year one. So yep, these are all just estimates, but this is the rough math. If you aim for this goal, then hopefully you will find quite a bit of success. Now, if you're here watching this video all about the theory behind how to find a successful game, if you want more of the technical side, if so, then you can go watch my free courses. You can learn everything you need to know in order to be able to technically build a great game. But then on the other side of it, you need to be able to learn how to sell your game. So that is all about marketing. So for that, check out the awesome videos that I made with Chris Sukowski, a Steam marketing expert. You can watch all those videos or you can get all that knowledge condensed into a super nice course. Then in general, to keep up to date with what's going on in the industry, check out my free Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and interesting articles that I come across every week. All of those are linked in the description. All right, so yep, here's your step-by-step -step blueprint on making a successful game that hits the top 10% of Steam. Now go ahead and make this blueprint become a reality. All right, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.